The global aviation industry is witnessing a bold move from Russia. Under the heavy pressure of Western sanctions, the United Aircraft Corporation, UAC, has unexpectedly made a shocking move, filing a patent for a new wide-body aircraft designed to compete head-on with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, the very symbol of modern mid-size aviation. Notably, what was to come is not only an attempt to break free from dependency, but is also positioned to challenge and even surpass Western technology. But what exactly is this aircraft, and why could it change the aviation industry? Let's find out. Russia's aviation sector is navigating through one of its stormiest chapters. In the aftermath of the Ukraine conflict, Western sanctions have struck a heavy blow, forcing Moscow into a corner. To survive, it must build its own aircraft. While models like the Sukhoi Superjet and MC-21 cover part of the market, the gap in the wide-body segment remains glaring. At present, the four-engine Ilyushin Il-76 stands as the only wide-body aircraft still in production, but it is hardly sufficient to compete on the global stage. Moscow once pinned its hopes on the ambitious CR-929 project, a high-profile joint venture with China launched in 2016, aimed at challenging the Airbus A330neo and Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Early progress was promising, design work, supplier selection, and wind tunnel testing by 2019. But cracks soon appeared. Disputes over specifications and intellectual property, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the crushing weight of sanctions brought the program to a near standstill. With Western suppliers cut off, the project stalled, pushing potential test flights beyond 2028. By mid-2023, UAC officially stepped back, leaving Comac to rebrand the program as C929, with Air China as the launch customer. Since then, Russia has been relegated to the sidelines, contributing primarily as a component supplier rather than a true partner. Yet Russia's thirst for a wide-body solution has never subsided. For Moscow, sustaining its aviation power means creating a new generation of wide-body aircraft, fully domestic, fully Russian. Reports suggest the Ministry of Defense plans to kick off R&D initiatives in 2026, a potential first step toward that goal. But the road ahead is steep. Developing a wide-body jet requires massive resources, a resilient supply chain, and cutting-edge technology, all elements that this country continues to struggle for under the shadow of sanctions. Born out of that effort, the wide-body long-range aircraft WBLRA, a new strategic weapon in the skies, has emerged. Designed to carry passengers, baggage, and even cargo on intercontinental routes, the WBLRA is not merely a commercial aircraft, it is a technological declaration that Russia still has what it takes to compete head-to-head -head with the West. So how exactly will this aircraft threaten Western technology? Hold on, you know what? Everything is about to get even more mind-blowing. But before we dive deeper, Make sure to smash that like button, share, and subscribe for more. Appreciate the support. First, although details remain limited, as news of the aircraft has only recently been revealed, documents indicate that the new aircraft will come in three variants. The shortened version WBLRA 500, which has 236 seats, the standard version 600, which has 281 seats, and the stretched version 700, with 320 seats. With impressive ranges of 13,600, 12,000, and 10,300 kilometers respectively, the aircraft can cross oceans and conquer long-haul routes traditionally dominated by Airbus and Boeing. In particular, these figures even surpass those of the C929, which seats between 280 and 400 passengers, and has a range of approximately 12,000 kilometers. Second, the secret of the new aircraft lies not only in its configuration, but deep within its technology. The Russian wide-body aircraft makes use of advanced polymer composite materials, delivering superior performance and lower operating costs. Compared to the legendary Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner, the Russian wide-body aircraft is claimed to hold clear competitive advantages, 3% lower ownership costs, 6% lower direct operating costs, and, most strikingly, 15-17% to lower operating costs per seat kilometer. Should these figures be realized, the Dreamliner could, for the first time, face a genuine challenger to its dominance. The emergence of the wide-body jet also raises an intriguing question about the future of the Russian-Chinese aviation industry. This project shows that Russia has chosen a separate path after its CR-929 collaboration with Comac China ran into a number of problems. While the Chinese wide-body aircraft is still struggling with supply chain issues and uncertainty regarding its first flight, the Russian aircraft shows that Moscow is determined to be self-sufficient and create an independent competitor. 
This is not just a move to compete with the West, but a silent declaration that Russia no longer wants to play a dependent role in a project it once co-founded with China, but instead to be a competitor. This ambition is further fueled by government support. Minister of Industry and Trade Anton Alakhanov emphasized that technical requirements are being reviewed from aerodynamic design to engine thrust. It's not yet clear which engine will power the aircraft, but there is speculation that it could be the PD-35 engine, which offers significant performance competition to Western engines. Moreover, Anton Alakhanov noted that in 2026, Moscow plans to launch a series of R&D projects for the WBLRA, though he admitted it is still too early to set a precise date for its maiden flight. Nevertheless, the situation is clear. The new aircraft is not just another aircraft project, it is a declaration of resurgence, a weapon for Russia to challenge the Dreamliner's crown within a playing field long monopolized by the West. Since both COMAC's C929 project and UAC's WBLRA are strongly backed by their governments, which aircraft do you think will be more successful? Or, which technology do you value more? Comment 1 if you believe it's definitely the C929. Comment 2 if you think Russia's long history of aircraft manufacturing will make their new wide-body jet stand out. Thanks for joining. However, behind this facade of technical success, the challenges and risks facing the new aircraft project are by no means small. In fact, they could determine its very success or failure. Although the ambition is to create a formidable competitor, Russia's path forward remains fraught with obstacles, especially under the weight of sanctions. The greatest risk confronting this jet lies in production capacity and technology. Developing a wide-body aircraft requires far more than a strong design. It demands a highly complex and reliable manufacturing ecosystem. The pressing question is whether this country can mass-produce the PD-35 engines, along with electronic components, hydraulic systems, and advanced composite materials at a level of quality and reliability comparable to the West. The PD-35 engine is regarded as the heart of the project, but producing a large, high-performance jet engine with long service life is an extraordinarily expensive and difficult process. Furthermore, replacing Western suppliers, now cut off, poses a daunting challenge, with high risks of quality issues or supply chain disruptions. Besides, developing a wide-body jet can consume tens of billions of dollars, a massive financial burden for any country. While this country's government will likely pour funds into this project as a strategic priority, whether it can maintain stable financing under an economy strained by sanctions remains uncertain. Any delay or technical setback could inflate costs and place severe pressure on the project's budget. Ultimately, here's the thing about a tremendous challenge if Russia has ambitions to bring this aircraft to the international market. Certification and international market challenges. Even if Russia succeeds in building the WBLRA, perhaps the greatest challenge will be bringing it to the international market. To fly in global airspace, the aircraft must receive certification from international aviation authorities such as ICAO, FAA, or EASA. This is a rigorous, complex process requiring transparency and high safety standards, something Western regulators may scrutinize heavily when evaluating a Russian-made aircraft. Without international certification, this aircraft would be confined to a limited set of markets, mainly domestic and those of Moscow's allied nations. This would drastically curtail its potential sales and global impact, reducing this airliner from a global contender to a regional solution. However, this challenge will become inconsequential if Russia's only intention is to meet its domestic needs. In short, the road ahead for the Russian new jet is riddled with risks, and its success will hinge on this country's ability to overcome the technological, financial, and political challenges that threaten to derail the project. Despite these significant technological and financial hurdles, Russia has a mystery weapon to position their new jet for success. So, what secret did this country uncover? Its plan hinges on a targeted market approach and an aggressive pricing model, which turns geopolitical isolation into a competitive advantage. In today's turbulent geopolitical and economic landscape, the market and pricing strategy of Russia's WBLRA aircraft project is a complex equation, far beyond the scope of conventional commerce. The possibility of this new airliner penetrating Western markets such as Europe and North America is virtually non-existent, as airlines there are deeply entrenched in the supply chains and after-sales ecosystems of Boeing and Airbus. To take the risk of switching to an unproven aircraft would simply be too great. Given these limitations, it is forced to concentrate on three strategic market areas. First and foremost is the domestic Russian market. Russian airlines are struggling to maintain their Western-made fleets under sanctions, with spare parts procurement and maintenance becoming a severe challenge. 
The wide-body aircraft serves as a lifeline solution, enabling this country to restructure and modernize its fleet while ensuring long-haul aviation independence. The next focus lies with BRICS and SCO nations, a market full of potential. Countries such as China, India, Iran, and several states in Africa and Latin America are actively seeking alternatives to Boeing and Airbus. Growing political and economic ties among these nations could open significant opportunities for this new wide-body jet. In fact, this aircraft may become a strategic solution for countries under Western pressure, such as Iran or Venezuela, where the acquisition of new aircraft is nearly impossible. This positions the aircraft not just as an aircraft, but as a tool of economic diplomacy, strengthening Russia's alliances and expanding its influence. Besides, another notable point is the price. The pricing strategy of this aircraft is not only an economic calculation, but also a political lever. By relying on domestic suppliers and state financial support, Russia could offer the aircraft at an initial price significantly lower than the Boeing 787. This could prove decisive, particularly for airlines in developing countries. However, this aircraft's true competitive edge lies in its lower operating costs. With direct operating costs per seat kilometer estimated to be 15 to 17 percent lower than the Dreamliner, it promises an attractive long-term return on investment. This is a bait difficult for any airline seeking cost optimization to resist. Beyond selling aircraft, Russia could deploy WBLRA as a political instrument, offering flexible financing packages, preferential loans, or barter agreements. In short, Russia's aim is not to compete with Boeing and Airbus within the traditional global marketplace, but to build a new, independent aviation ecosystem shaped by cooperation among nations outside the Western sphere of influence. The success of this program will not only be measured in sales figures, but in the degree of autonomy and geopolitical leverage it grants this nation amid today's volatile world order. Finally, what would you think if you had the chance to sit on this aircraft? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget, Subscribe if you want more deep dives into the battles shaping our world. Because in aviation, as in politics, the skies are never as calm as they seem. Thanks, and stay safe.